Welcome to the channel. Uh, if you're new here, my name is Chris. I'm an instrument rated private pilot and as of right now, also an amateur aircraft builder. Um, we'll consider this the official launch of the build series on this channel and it's going to go on for years. Uh, most likely. Um, back in December 11th of 2022, I recorded the same message looking straight into this lens on day one of the build. And now that I'm finally getting around to gathering everything together and try to piece these together for videos, I realized that I actually lost that file. So uh, here we are at the end of March. Um, I've got uh, a few months of building uh, under my belt, um, more realistically a few weeks of building because of work commitments and whatnot. But um, as I progress with this channel, it's really here just to be a document proving that I built this aircraft, not only for myself, but ultimately for the FAA to demonstrate that I meet the 51% rule for experimental aircraft. The reason that I'm publishing it on YouTube is because um, I've been the fortunate beneficiary of uh, learning quite a bit from other builders who publish their builds. And if there's anything that I can contribute to the conversation, fantastic, including being honest about the mistakes that I make as they occur. So um, ultimately, this channel is probably going to filter down to being a lot of sped up GoPro video as I go throughout the build a day and occasionally slowing it down to show things of note. Um, and of course, narrating what's going on at the time. Um, I guess that's really it. This is really the bulk of the message that I recorded like four months ago. Um, so let's just get into it. Stay tuned. First up, the airplane. I decided to build a Vans RV-8. It's a kit-built aircraft. There are thousands of them flying. They've got a great reputation. Um, and it will allow me to do the things that I want to do, which is to go really far, really fast, do it upside down, uh, fly aerobatics. It's a two seat tandem. Uh, so center line and uh, small enough that I can build it in my garage. So we'll see how that goes. Should take me about four years. Let's find out. Okay. So uh, just a quick little tour. Um, it's a three car garage or one of these. It's really more like a two and a half. It'd be pretty tough to fit it. A car in there without ripping the mirrors off but uh <clears throat> spent a couple of weeks trying to get this ready um so that i can spend the next few years building an airplane in here um i built the eaa i forget it was chapter 1000 workbenches pretty much the same as the plans the only difference that i added was um, i put some sturdy locking casters on the bottom and then i put a little shelf platform right here so that my dimpler here um, actually just fits right in that gap and i've got a big space for dimpling skins at whatever point i get to that i got a lot of junk underneath good storage for you know whatever i'm working on air tools i have plumbed my compressor through the ceiling with the drop down here and then the nice uh lightweight uh 10 foot air hose from cleveland tools uh this bench i made with the scraps left over from this uh it's not quite square but it's close and then all my bench top tools are bolted down here these uh, feet that I put on here, these are leveling uh, casters. Um, so they're not super convenient for moving around, but you can. <clears throat> but then once it's locked in place, it's really, really sturdy. Uh, <clears throat> vice on the corner, swiveling vice so that I can uh, make sure that I've got enough room to work on whatever I'm working on. Disc and belt sander, um, buffer slash grinder, which is really all about that scotch bright wheel right there. I tried to set all this up in a way that I could still have um, adequate access to the parts I was working on without bumping into anything. This side over here, um, airplane parts storage. Uh, and then this big space right here, I set this up in a way that I can still park my truck inside at night. Uh, a three view of the van's RV-8 that I'm building here. Um, 
all the plans, uh, the different exploded drawings are set up here on this little kind of desktop easel. Um, a big workstation, my tool chest, um, everything on top is basically exclusively airplane tools and all my little um, parts, um, rivets and fasteners and whatnot are labeled in in little jars, plastic by the way, plastic jars, um, magnetic, and then sort of general purpose tools down here in the bottom for the most part. I put all of this together in a way that um, I hoped I would be able to move it and take my work with me. I work um, several months out of the year away from home and I don't want this to be a 15 or 20 year build project. So uh, I picked up a trailer here that will become my uh, mobile airplane factory uh, next time I take off for any period of time. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. This is the place where I um, drill holes in the wrong spots on uh, airplane parts. So anyways, more to come. Thanks for watching. Ordinarily, the first kit you receive is the tail section or the empennage. And the plans usually suggest that you start with the horizontal stabilizer. Looks simple enough. Um, in this video here, you'll see me getting started on day one, trying to work on the horizontal stabilizer. Uh, spoiler alert, I can tell you that in the first week that I worked on this thing, I probably spent uh, 75 or 80% of my time just staring at the plans and scratching my head. The rest of the time, was sort of an even mix of doing things right and doing things wrong. So we'll do a little Keystone Cops uh, high-speed video here. And uh, as we move along, we'll see how things shape up. Here you can see me getting the build off to a brilliant start by talking into a camera on the left of the screen that apparently is not recording. Uh, <laughs> hopefully this isn't a sign of things to come. If I recall correctly, the first step um, in the plans for the horizontal stabilizers to start working on the rear spar. Um, you've got two pieces of the rear spar and then a couple of long, you see it in my hands, um, sort of heavy aluminum reinforcement bars. Um, finishing the edges, uh, making sure that there are no harsh, this is a first for me by the way, but um, so-called breaking the edges, especially on these reinforcement bars, making sure that they don't interfere with the radius um, on the spar where the flange uh, goes down into the web of the spar. And then ultimately you need to clean it up and you'll have to prime it because it's not a um, like an all clad, uh, meaning corrosive resistant piece of aluminum. Um, but you'll see me probably going back and forth a lot to the bench, looking at the plans, maybe going on my laptop and uh, looking at Vans Air Force or into a Slack group that I belong to, trying to understand what these plans mean. Um, at the end of the day, uh, a lot of the work that you're doing on the airplane um, or the parts of the airplane involves just cleaning up uh, edges, um, sharp edges, making sure that there aren't any places where there can be stress concentrations that could lead to cracks, um, deburring holes, uh, putting everything together, then taking it back apart again. Uh, it's a big part of the process, uh, getting everything fitted. Uh, this aircraft, the Vans RV-8 kit, at least the iteration that I have, um, the skins, um, for the most part, are all pre-punched, so the holes are where they should be. Um, my responsibility is to final size drill them to whatever they're matching, and oftentimes there is match drilling, meaning there's a hole in one piece of material, but not the other. Um, somebody um, before I ordered my kit described it as adult Legos. Now that I've been doing it for a little bit, I'd say it's a bit more complex than that. Um, the kit itself, uh, the plans are terrific. Um, they're, you will find little peccadillos in there that uh, things are maybe a little bit incorrect, but you've got a lot of resources once you know how to write, ask the right questions. 
a lot of resources that you can call upon to get clarification. And I would say for anybody who's starting this out, um, don't be in a rush to start putting things together, especially cutting and bending and drilling metal. If you, if you're not sure exactly what you're doing, just start doing some research. Um, it'll pay off in spades in the end, uh, the learning curve and learning how to translate and read the plans and the diagrams, um, will eventually catch up and you'll start to speak that language. But in the beginning, um, mistakes are bound to happen. And I made a few, um, including in this very first bit, uh, and we'll get more into that later. That'll wrap up day one. We'll catch you on the next one.